Jesus Christ is the mirror image of God. There is a palace in the city of Rome, which has a great high dome. And inside that dome, there is a painting known as the Dawn, by Guido Reni. In order that visitors may see this masterpiece, a table has been placed directly beneath the dome, and on the table, a mirror. When one looks into the mirror, they see the majestic painting which is far above. Is that not what the Incarnation is all about? Jesus of Nazareth is the mirror image of God. Christmas is a time of joy, and I hope you've already felt that joy resonating through you with all these beautiful hymns that we have heard. And all our thoughts are focused on the beautiful gift of the child Jesus whom God has given to us. The prophet said, To those who live in darkness, a great light has appeared in Bethlehem, and to those who abide in the valley of death, a new hope for eternal life has dawned from the manger in Bethlehem. Therefore, friends, sing aloud along with the angels, glory to God in the highest and peace to people of good will on earth. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. After the angels left, the shepherds said to one another, Come, let us go to Bethlehem and see the things that have happened there, which the Lord has told us. My dear brothers and sisters, let us also go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has done for us. This evening, or this middle of the night rather, we shall briefly consider three questions regarding Bethlehem. Why Bethlehem, of all places? Where is Bethlehem? And what had God done at Bethlehem? So firstly, why Bethlehem? Bethlehem was a small village, eight kilometers away from Jerusalem. It certainly was not as glorious and splendid as Jerusalem, where the temple of the Lord stood. Yet Bethlehem was a small town dear to every Israelite. A number of events clustered around this little town, which was endeared to every Jew. The first mention of Bethlehem is found right at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis 35, verse 16. And it is a very sorrowful one. Rachel, the beloved wife of Jacob, for whom he had labored for 14 years to win. Can you imagine his patience to get the hand of a bride? Rachel had just died and was buried there. We read when Jacob and his family journeyed through Bethlehem, Rachel was in birth pangs. When she was in hard labor, as her soul was departing, she gave birth to her son, whom she called Tenonai, a child of sorrow. But her husband called him Benjamin, son of my right hand. So can you imagine how tragic? He waits 14 years, Jacob, to win Rachel's hand, and then she dies giving childbirth. And when Rachel died, he buried her in Bethlehem. Isn't this incident, which took place 1,800 years before Jesus Christ, very prophetic? Might not have Mary called her son Jesus, Benoni, 
a man of sorrow. Simon said to Mary, A sword shall pierce your heart, a sword shall pierce your soul. While Mary may call her son a child of sorrow, what did his father call him? Benjamin, son of my right hand. As a man, Jesus was Benoni, a man of sorrow, but as God, Jesus was Benjamin, the son of God's right hand. Another woman who made Bethlehem celebrated was Ruth, the great-grandmother of King David, a woman from Moab. Although she was not an Israelite, she followed her mother-in-law, Naomi, and settled in Bethlehem. It was in Bethlehem Ruth met her husband Boaz and married him. It was in Bethlehem her son Obed was born, and Obed became the father of Jesse, and Jesse became the father of King David, who was also born in Bethlehem. Thus Bethlehem became the royal city. Little as Bethlehem was, it is to be esteemed higher, for it is here that Israel's greatest King David was born, and it is here Jesus, the King of Kings, was also born. So where is Bethlehem? I don't mean to ask geographically where is Bethlehem. I've been there, so I know how to get there. And everyone else also probably knows how to get there. Just follow your travel agent's bookings. I just ask about the spiritual position of Bethlehem. Where can we find Bethlehem and how can we reach it? 500 years before Christ, the prophet Micah prophesied and said, But you, O Bethlehem, who are of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is the ruler of Israel. Bethlehem was a simple village, but God had exalted it by making it the birthplace of Christ. Bethlehem is the exaltation of the humble and the lowly in spirit. Bethlehem is where humility is. Bethlehem is where simplicity is. Bethlehem is where goodness is. And Christ is always born there. Christ is always found among the little ones. In Isaiah 57 verse 15, the Lord says, I dwell with him who is humble and contrite in spirit, and who trembles at my word. God always dwells with the humble and lowly of heart. Many of us who are today sitting over here may be truly called the humble Bethlehem. We may be little known around, we don't have a great name to boast about, nor do we have a great ancestry to flaunt. In fact, in my own ancestry, there are a few crooks and robbers. But, my friends, take it from me. Christ is born for you and is born for me. For the Lord said, I dwell with the humble and contrite in spirit. So thirdly, what did the Lord do at Bethlehem? In that humble village of Bethlehem, something great, something mysterious, something divine happened. The Word became flesh. In the darkness of midnight, amidst the howling of the wolves and the bleating of the sheep, 
in a remote area, the Saviour was born. God, who was immortal, took upon himself our mortality. That's what happened in Bethlehem. On Christmas Eve, a child was born, a son was given. True. But the question is, is he born unto me? Christ was born in Bethlehem, yet he was not born unto King Herod. Christ was born in Bethlehem, yet he was not born unto the chief priests and scribes who resided in Herod's palace. Christ may be born a hundred times in Bethlehem, but what does it profit if he is not born unto you and unto me? The birth of Christ is beautiful and beneficial only to those who accept him and recognize him at his coming, like the three kings and the shepherds. Christ is the Savior, not to all of those who celebrate Christmas. Christ is the Savior, not to all those who bear his name, Christians. Christ becomes the Savior only to those who accept him, believe him, and surrender their lives to him. Sir James Simpson has made a number of scientific discoveries, including the anesthetic property of chloroform. So he became world famous in 1847. One day, when Sir James Simpson was old and was lecturing, one of his students asked him, Sir, what is your greatest discovery? The scientist answered, The greatest discovery I'd ever made was this. I am a great sinner, and Jesus Christ is my great Saviour. My dear brothers and sisters, I pray tonight that all of us who are assembled here to celebrate the birth of the Messiah may make that same discovery, that we are all great sinners, but Jesus Christ is our great Saviour. And a last thought. Bethlehem means the house of bread. So out of Bethlehem comes the Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament. And every time we celebrate Mass, we can take Jesus into our hearts. Our dear Jesus, Holy Child, make the abed soft, undefiled, within my heart, that it may be a quiet chamber kept for Thee.